Hello crew and welcome back to another spray castle tutorial. Today we're going to be creating an intermediate level spray painting and we're going to start just by covering our poster board with light layers of light blue. Now we're going to do this and we're going to leave some areas blank and that will be our clouds in the background. Can you see that? Excellent. Crew, I can't stress out enough how important it is to make sure you have a well ventilated area. Make sure when you spray paint you always wear your mask. With that being said, I'm going to use my Spray Castle Black Spray Paint. And I'm just going to spray a little bit here on the side. I like to use pieces of uh, poster board to do this. As you can tell, I have a plastic underneath my painting. You could do it there, but it gets a little messy. So I prefer doing it this way. What we're going to do is we're going to create the shape of our mountain. Just using the Spray Castle tool, I'm going to tap into some black and smear downwards. This is the stage where we get to kind of lay out a silhouette of how this mountain is going to look. And as you can tell, it's not very hard. We're just going to smear the colors together. Tap a little bit more. Perhaps we can have another peak right here. Okay, let me smear that down. Okay. And you just kind of lay out the foundation where your mountain's going to go. We're going to add that extra peak right here. We're just going to smear it down. Now I am counting that it's going to blend a little bit with the colors that we used underneath. Now because we use light layers to create the sky, you're not going to have an exaggerated amount of color blending going on. So something to keep in mind. Okay. Using our Spraycaso light blue, I am going to create a mist effect here on the bottom, just blending the mountain into uh, the background. And I'm doing this because I am not going to create the water going into the mountain. I'm going to actually put some plants here. So I just want to give this a nice little blending effect throughout the background. So I am picturing putting some plant life here in this area, uh, perhaps just throughout the whole painting in the background, but we're not going to show where the mountain connects with the water. Now I, I, get, a, I get this question asked a lot when people ask me, hey Spray, do you know exactly what you're going to paint? The answer is no, guys. I mean, I have a vague idea of how I want this painting to start, but most importantly, I just start painting, and as we go along, I start adding details. Sometimes I'll recognize, you know what, a rock will look better here, uh, a tree, or whatnot. So it's important that you always keep a open mind. Uh, don't be so um, don't be so concentrated on having the painting that you're envisioning come to life right away. It'll change as you go through the painting. Now using the sea sponge, as you can see here, I'm just going to use a little bit of black and I'm just going to tap, 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 tap here in the background. This is going to be the plant life that's going to be getting closer to us. Now I added a little bit on the right side as well. And I'm just going to cover this area with the black. We just need the edges to kind of distinguish the detail. So I'm going to go over just like this, tap, tap, tap. This will save you some time. That way you don't have to go all the way through and make sure that you add all this detail. Now, I'm just going to create the effect of water by blending the edges. Now, you don't want to blend too much into the land. You just want to blend just a little bit on the edges. And that'll give you a nice little ripple effect going throughout your painting. This technique is very easy to do and it creates a, a, a nice effect, a nice water effect going throughout your painting. So I recommend you experiment with this technique. Now then, uh, let's work on the mountains a little bit. I'm going to add some white, as you can see here off on the left, and I'm going to use my Spray Castle tool. Now as you can see, the silhouette of the mountains is already pretty well defined in the background. So we're just going to tap 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 and I'm gonna start blending some of the white with the silhouette layer that we added earlier it will blend and because we're using light layers it won't be like it's gonna turn into a gray color the layer below should already be dry when you're doing this so if you have to make sure you touch it it's dry to the touch and then you can begin adding your uh, your um, detail layer on top in this case it's gonna be a little bit of snow I'm not gonna make it too snowy just enough to give you the effect that it's cold. Maybe it's a cold Sunday morning. All right, we're just gonna tap, tap, tap. 
As you guys know, I live in Colorado. Uh, beautiful city. I love it. Uh, the weather is fantastic. Uh, we get a little bit of everything. So it'll snow and then it'll rain and then it'll be hot and all in one day. So this is a little bit where I'm getting my inspiration from. I can see the Rockies in the, in the background and you can see a little bit of snow at times. And yet it can be a nice warm day so i'm just gonna add that effect here and this is what i'm what i'm portraying i highly recommend you guys uh take a look at your surroundings or, or perhaps it can be an imaginary place this is your world right we're just gonna use a little clear coat on top of our mounts that what i'm doing here is i am blending the colors together i'm being careful not to create a gray smudge so I'm doing this very, very carefully on some of the edges. This is going to take some practice, guys. I know it looks easy, and it is easy once you get the hang of it. And to do that, you have to practice. Uh, you know, I'm often told, uh, spray, you know, you've got a lot of talent. Uh, you're a very talented guy. Guys, talent has a little bit to do with it, but practice has everything to do with it. You know, it's not like I woke up one day and I could do this. So, you know, practice, practice, practice. This is a nice piece that can get you going. You can experiment some of your more advanced techniques with this. It's all about layering. I'm going to add a little bit of blue here. Now that our silhouette layer of the plant life that's close to us is dry, using a little bit of sea sponge, I'm going to go through and add some highlights. Now this is another thing you have to be aware of. You, some layers you have to wait until they're completely dry. This is one of them. Because if you start adding your blue on top of it and it starts mixing with the black, you're gonna get, um, it's kinda like a really dark blue. It's gonna be almost like a smudge. And I don't want that. I want the highlights to really stand out. So you have to make sure that this layer is completely dry. I'm just gonna tap, tap. And we're gonna do this throughout our painting. Make sure we add all the plant life here in the background. Just little dabs. You don't have to cover the entire area, guys. You only want to do the highlights. So stick to the edges. Make sure you have a nice defined light source. This, this is going to help. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a little bit of black and I'm doing quick bursts. It's just pss, 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 quick bursts. This is going to ensure that I get a layer that darkens some of those highlights that I added. So I can go back and add some more highlights and they'll just stand out a lot more. It's, it's a technique that'll give you a, a depth effect, right? So now I'm gonna make sure that my, my layers are dry. Using the Spray Castle Funnel, I've already went ahead and added some black into it. I'm just gonna create some trees. Now, this is very easy. I have seen a lot of people use folded sheets and, and you know, just other items that they've tried to make themselves. I highly recommend you try the funnel, guys. As you can tell, you don't have to quit, keep spraying into your hand or into the little folded sheet. You put your paint in here and look how long it lasts. You can go through, add some very fine details. If you don't know how to create this, I do have a tutorial. Uh, it's on my uh, YouTube page and it shows you how to create the funnel. Uh, you don't need anything too expensive, maybe some duct tape and uh, poster board. I'm going to create a layer of silhouette trees. Now I'm making sure that they overlap some of the layers that we added earlier. This is going to give depth to your painting once again. So I'm going to create some branches here. Now try and make your branches random. Try not to stick too much to a pattern because people will be able to see that. And, you know, Go outside, take a look at some of the trees out there, and you'll see how the branches is going to go skewed everywhere. That's the effect I'm trying to imitate here. I'm just going to add it here in some random places because I just want branches to be coming out of the ground. Now, we are going to add some leaves on this later on. Keep that in mind. So don't, don't put too many branches in front of your mountain or, you know, in front of the eye-catching parts of your painting. I went ahead and added a little bit more black into the funnel. Uh, this is uh, so that I can add some more layers, another silhouette layer on top of what we've created. Once again, guys, make sure that your painting is dry to the touch when you're doing this. Uh, it takes, you know, that's the beauty about spray painting. That's the beauty and the curse about spray painting. 
Uh, you can create paintings really fast. I think this painting took about uh, maybe about 25 minutes. Uh, I'm just estimating about 25 minutes. But in 25 minutes, look at what you've created, you know. Uh, the, the thing about oils, it can take up to a month to dry. So that's what I like about spray painting. However, you do have to be aware of how fast the layers dry, how thick you're putting them on. There's a few things to take under consideration, but overall, you know, it's worth it. It's really fun to do. I really, really enjoy it. Now I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Go over some of these areas. This is, uh, you remember we added a little bit of black here in the background to kind of fade out some of those highlights. Well, now I'm going through and I am adding light blue as part of the tree leaves here closer to us. So they're more vibrant. That's why I darkened the area in the background so that the tree leaves that are closer to us are a little bit more vibrant. Uh, you know, it shows that, that, that perception that they're closer to us uh, a little bit more. And we're going to do this throughout whatever branches we want to fill in or, you know, details that we want to add. As you can see, I've added some tree leaves here on the upper left hand corner of my painting and a few details throughout the bottom half. Now I'm going to use a little bit more of that light blue and with my spray castle tool I'm going to create some rocks here on the bottom. This is a, a fine example of what I mean. I did not know that there was going to be a rock here but after I took a look at it you know it just looked like a good spot to do a rock. Now notice what I added here. A little bit of clear coat to make sure that I'd be able to smear the paint into the background. This is a fine way of creating rocks really easy to do just takes a little bit of practice okay the beauty about this technique is you can use it throughout your entire painting this is a great way to creating textures I'm gonna try that here on this end now it's already dry so I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue again a little bit of clear coat and I'm gonna smear our blue into the background colors I don't want to completely wipe it out but I do want to make sure that it gets blended into the background that looks pretty good. Maybe just touch it up a little bit. And voila. All right. I'm going to add some highlights. So I went ahead and added some white and a little bit of blue, uh, light blue, the Spricasso light blue. With the sea sponge, I'm going to blend the two colors together. And before I do this on my canvas, I'm going to go ahead and practice a little bit here on the table. And I'm going to start going through and I don't want these highlights to be overpowering, which is why I mixed it with light blue. You have to be careful, uh, you know, where you add your highlights. You don't want it to be completely white everywhere. You want to make sure you select some of the areas. In this case, you have to imagine a light source coming into your painting and try and stick to that pattern wherever your light source is located. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white here. Heck, maybe even add some, some white to the mountains. And some of the plant life that's underneath the mountains. Using the same combination of white and light blue, I'm gonna define now where our terrain meets the water. And you can do this very gently. I'm just using the uh, sea sponge. And I'm just going through and just creating the effect of reflections, of light being reflected off the water, of maybe some ripples. So it's kind of important you go throughout your painting, especially on the edges. I really like going through the edges and, and defining that connection, that separation between land and water. And it's important you do that because otherwise it'll just blend in together. Yeah. You can create some really neat effects with it. I highly, highly encourage you to practice this technique on your paintings. And see, since it's the same color scheme, I'm able to go through and just add some small details throughout the plant life that meets with the water. Tap, tap, tap. That's all it takes. Quick little taps. Little taps, some determination, some imagination, some practice, and guys, you will be there. All right, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Until next time, keep those cans shaking.